All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get started here. I'm David Hale. I'm the undersheriff here in Bonner County. Thank you all for coming. Just a kind of a brief setup for the discussion today. Um, Sheriff Wheeler will be presenting uh, a few facts and some specific remarks. And shortly after that, he'll open it up for questions. As far as the uh, questions are concerned, there will certainly be things that we won't be able to comment on. I'm sure you're all familiar and uh, aware of how that works. Um, there will be electronic files mailed to you at your request. Um, we have a fact sheet that will be provided at the conclusion of the meeting. Thank you. Sheriff Wheeler. Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you for your attendance this morning. On Sunday, June 22nd, Marcus A. Rael of Glendale, Arizona, fled the scene of a traffic stop in the city of Coeur d'Alene, leading officers on a pursuit which ended on milepost five, five at Interstate 90. Rael began shooting at officers while pulling off the interstate. After the truck he was driving came to a stop, Rael continued to fire at officers. The involved law enforcement personnel that exchanged gunfire with Rael included six officers from the Coeur d'Alene Police Department, three officers from the Post Falls Police Department, two deputies from the Kootenai County Sheriff's Office, and one trooper from the Idaho State Police. The gunman received immediate life-saving interventions by the officers on scene and then was taken to Kootenai Health for treatment. These actions by those officers likely saved the life of Marcus Rael. He is now in custody in the Kootenai County Jail on a one million dollar bond. Bonner County Sheriff's Office was asked to lead this investigation. The detectives you see here to my right have been involved in that investigation. The Butter County Sheriff's Office currently is faced with the oversight of two very recent officer-involved shootings uh, investigations. The paradox that our agency is faced with is trying to conduct an investigation, actually two dual investigations, yet keep the public informed without compromising these investigations. Unlike general members of the public, we law enforcement can't operate on opinion and we must protect information which might jeopardize a fair trial. Officers involved on that Sunday night showed great resolve and, and, are, and, and are testament to their professionalism. An example of that professionalism was when officers immediately provided life-saving measures to the suspect who minutes earlier was trying to kill them. I personally want to thank the public for their support and that many have provided and patience is requested from the public as this investigation unfolds. I'm going to take a few minutes to answer some questions and I want to share some facts to the case that maybe that have not been let out. Uh, to my right, you can see actually two facsimiles of the weapons that were confiscated the night of the incident. I want to, to tell you that these are not actual photos of the weapons taken, but they are facsimiles. The first one is an AK-47. It's a rifle, it's a military style rifle, and it, and it also included a high magazine, high capacity magazine that was also taken at the time of the arrest. Next to that is an FM 5.7 carbine rifle. This is uh, what's known as a cop killer. This is, there's no reason for this. It kind of holds the kind of bullet that will penetrate vests. And you should note that the, this is the, that particular weapon is designed to hold 50 rounds. Some other information, and you may have got uh, images of that when some of you were at the scene, the suspect, Mr. Rael, was actually driving a 2004 Nissan Titan pickup, and it was it uh, seemed to be fortified. It had a, a a a Tommy gate, metal Tommy gate on the back, and it had several 
uh, boxes, toolboxes in it. So when he came to rest along, he was in a fortified position between the Jersey barrier and his truck, uh, which, uh, which was, uh, was a, a, to his advantage. Uh, right now, I'd like to take some questions uh, and open it up to you. Keith? What was the original basis for the traffic stop? It was a DUI traffic stop investigation. Are, are these um, legal weapons? Yes, they these are. are both legal weapons? Yes, they are legal to and possess. How many rounds did he have? Well, that's part of the investigation, and we're not going to release that information at this time. Can you say how many rounds he fired? Uh, that's also part of the investigation, and th that information will be released at a later time. Did his FM 5.7 actually have the 50 round mag on it? Well, that, that rifle is designed, it's part of the integral part of the, it has a 50 round rag magazine built into the design of that weapon. Sheriff, would you be a little bit more specific about what the Coeur d'Alene police officer may have seen in the way of activity that made him think that this person was a, a drunk driving? Did he get a, a phone call from another motorist? Did the patrolman just see this guy weaving down Sherman Avenue? Well, th those are part of the, the investigation. I can tell you that there was probable cause to make the traffic stop, and through that investigation and the contact, um, Mr. Rael decided to, to flee, and which started this pursuit. So Mr. Rael has exited Interstate 90 westbound at Spokane Street, and that is where he allegedly started shooting at the officers that were pursuing him? Uh, that's correct. He actually started at Sherman and 90 and then went westbound and that's where he pulled his vehicle off the highway at Spokane Street and Post Falls at mile post 5. That's correct. That's where the shooting started? That's correct. And uh, would you say the shooting occurred eastbound of where his truck was up against the Jersey guards on the westbound on-ramp? No. Mr. Rael was driving westbound when when he saw the officers, he pulled off of the highway, and that's when he started shooting at the officers prior to him crashing into the Jersey barrier. And then Sheriff, cell phone video of the incident shows that the officers who now had Mr. Rael stopped and barricaded between his truck and the Jersey guards, yelling at him to give up. Can you tell us anything about the dynamics of the, the go-between? I can, I can tell you that Mr. Rael started shooting and he was uh, at a position, fortified position, and that the officers did uh, try to talk him out of giving up his weapons and come out. And that was prior to any of the officers on scene shooting at him. So there was an effort to, to de-escalate the situation and to get him to give up and stop shooting. Even though he already cracked off rounds at some of the guys? Yeah, absolutely. Do you know what the impetus was for the officers to begin returning fire? Do you know what caused, what, what, what was the event that caused the officers to decide we're going to stop negotiating and start defending ourselves? Uh, when he continued to fire at the officers. And do you get the feeling, Sheriff, that he was on foot behind the truck, north of the truck, but south of the Jersey Guard when he was doing this? Uh, that's part of our investigation. We're gaining uh, witness testimony and officer testimony and putting that together and those facts will be in our finding prior to uh, prior to filing other charges. Your detectives have looked at the patrol cars that were involved in this. Do they have a lot of bullet holes in them for Mr. Rael? Well, I can comment that they do have bullet holes and the final count will be, uh, that information will be released when we're completely done with that, that investigation. You have to understand that there are literally hundreds and it probably be up to a thousand pieces of evidence that has to be processed and that has to be examined. And, and we're going to take the totality of those circumstances and all the facts and bring them together. And we're, we will try to come to some conclusions, but we will bring facts and only facts to the prosecuting attorney in Kootenai County. And Barry McHugh will make those ultimate decisions on what charges will be filed. Sure, I beg your pardon. Did, did, did you say he, um, he had these two 
guns on him. Did he have any other weapons, or was it just these? I can't comment at that point, but we, I can just tell you that those were two weapons that we did confiscate. And do you know if he fired from both of these weapons here, or just from one of them? Evidence shows that he fired from both weapons, that's correct. And um, you said that when he pulled off the interstate at the interchange there when he saw, uh, saw police, was there a spike strip or a roadblock or something up in front of him that prompt, that he saw that prompted him? That's to correct. There? there was. With, yes, was that is correct. Like a spike strip. Yes, there was. Okay. Can you say if uh, he made any statements um, to um, police um, during or after uh, he was apprehended about what he was? Uh, what once he was, was taken into custody. Uh, he was uh, taken straight to the jail. He retained an attorney, and we have uh, not had the opportunity or, or have been denied access to Mr. Rael for questioning. Can you say what additional charges are expected? I can't, I can't say. What we're due is we're finished this investigation. There, will probably, there most likely will be additional charges, but until the, the investigation is completed and we're able to look and analyze all the statements of the witnesses, uh, try and determine the motives, then all of that, that packet will be given to the prosecutor and he will make that determination. Thank you. When these officers were attempting to de-escalate the situation, even though he already shot at them, they used his name. You can hear him yelling his name in the cell phone recording. Do you know how the patrol officers knew that this was Marco or Marcus as they were saying and do you know if they had the time to realize what his brother pulled off down in, in California? Uh, I can tell you that, that we don't we didn't know at the time what his brother had pulled out but there was prior conversation uh, with a dispatcher and uh, we're analyzing those comments and uh, trying to determine uh, I guess the motive and, and the comments that he made. It seems like he might have called 911 at some point during this thing and was asking the dispatchers to provide him some sort of assistance. And that's true. And all of those statements that he's made uh, are being analyzed. And uh, once we finish uh, analyzing those, uh, we could probably come to some kind of conclusion on what he was asking, requesting. I'm sorry. This. The gunman became incapacitated, or at least stopped shooting at you or uh, the officers uh, to the south when he ran am ammunition, or his bullet injuries put him in a position where he couldn't fight anymore. What would you say? Uh, it, it's it's hard to say. Uh, I just know that he was injured and he was suffering from the injuries. And as I said earlier, it was because of the life-threatening uh, injuries and the attention, the medical attention that he got from the deputies. Uh, on scene uh, were able to, to save his life and uh, provide him the emergency services he needed. Well, I'm, I'm a, I live in Post Falls, so I'm just alarmed that there was somebody driving around town that if I had crossed up fighting over a parking spot at Safeway, that, I mean, if he's not afraid to shoot out with y'all, imagine what he would do to one of us if we had gotten his way. Are you impressed with these fellows standing their ground? and dealing with this person and managed to not get hurt at the same time? Well, I'm, uh, I, first of all, I thank God that none of the officers got injured and none of the citizens who were around did. Yes, um, they showed great courage that night and restraint, uh, trying to de-escalate that scene. And if no one has ever been in a firefight or been shot at, you don't understand how, how stressful that can be. And my hat's off to those officers that were on scene or initially that they were trying to de-escalate that and trying to resolve this situation in a peaceful manner. But unfortunately, the, the way the cards were dealt, um, he was adamant on, on not giving up. And so, yes, it, it was very stressful. And you may have noted yesterday, uh, in, there was a report out of, out of the spoke, Spokes and Review, um, we have an increase of violent crime, unfortunately, in North Idaho. And um, we, based on the FBI statistics, we have almost twice the violent crimes that they have in Boise per capita. So this is an issue that uh, all law enforcement is cognizant about. We have to be ready and trained to deal with. So it, it's on our minds all the time. 
Did your investigation show that Mr. Ayala had been in the Gordon Lane area for a while and was working, or was he just passing through the spots? We haven't made those conclusions yet. That's that's part of that follow-up investigation. Uh, how many times was he hit? Was he shot? Uh, we haven't released that information. Okay. That will be forthcoming at the right time. Um, given how things are tracking now with the investigation, any idea on how long it'll take to get to prosecutors? You know, that's that's a really hard uh, answer, question to answer because uh, typically when, when ISP does investigations and they're part of the task force, it, it normally takes them six months before those investi you know, before the report's finished and, and sent to the prosecutor. We're hoping to be done a lot sooner. I mean, we've got, we have our team of detectives here that are overseeing. There's a lot of evidence that has to be gone through and analyzed, and um, we're, we're resilient, and we want to make sure that we do the right thing. We do a thorough investigation, that we turn over every rock, and that we have all the facts. And that's that's our goal. Thank you. What type of criminal record did this guy have? Uh, I think based on the information, I don't think he had any criminal record. There, there were 12 officers we know who were placed on um, leave because they had fired uh, during the incident. But were there additional? Officers on the scene who, who did not fire. And yes. How many? There were. I I think there was approximately about 16 officers on scene. But you have to realize that you had officers taking positions of closing the highway off. Uh, there was officers that had that were stopping uh, with with uh, stop sticks and spikes and trying to to prevent the suspect from going further west. So there was a lot of still resources coming. And originally, those 12 officers were placed on uh, administrative leave, which is the, which is standard policy and procedure. And those were those 12 officers that actually uh, shot and fired their weapons during this incident. Do you know if they remain on leave or have they returned to? Uh, from my understanding, they're just starting to go back back to work. Yes. When y'all took this in. FM 5.7 off this fella. Did it have the drum on it, or did it have a banana bag on it? The the FM 5.7 is is the is this one here. Okay. Uh, this is this is the AK 47, and it did have a high capacity drum uh, engaged into the weapon. So, if there's no other questions, any information on the other incident? Well, we're we're just only a week into that, and um, well, I'm not uh, prepared to make any comments about that. Uh, we should have some more information forthcoming, but uh, the detectives are doing their job, and I uh, want to thank Coeur d'Alene PD, part of the task force. They've sent some of their resources, as you can see. We're uh, up here in small Bonner County. We're kind of tapped out, and so we're uh, we're doing we're doing the job, and we're doing an excellent job. But um, we we're, we should have some information uh, in some time forward. I, I want to tell you that uh, I have a handout of all the information that I have. I will hand put it on the back table. I do have my card uh, there, so if you need to spell my name correctly, it's back there. And we do have this panned out on our press release page on BonnerCountySO.org, so you can download any of that if you need a, uh, a digital copy. So I want to thank you all for coming and um, appreciate your time. Thank you.